What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another 60 Feet 6 Inches, your fantasy baseball home over at FakePigskin.com. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. Follow me on Twitter, at NotoriousKRO. With me once again, it's Ben Rolf. What's up, Ben? Not much, Kyle. It's uh, It's been a good week. I hear that my Chelsea football team managed to beat your Man United team in the cup final yesterday, so I've been holding that one back for the podcast because oh. I uh, I wanted to save my good stuff for the podcast. So um, it's been a good weekend for me. I, we got thrashed at cricket. I was home by five o'clock, so I got some got some family time, and then we uh, we took my daughter swimming for the first time today, and uh, she absolutely loved it until she got dunked and then she cried. <laughs> uh, well, I love the FA Cup until uh, Hazard got that goal and. Then I cried. So it makes sense. I'm right there with you. Uh, if we're saving our best stuff for the podcast, I think we should just wrap it up now. Um, that was good. All right. Good times. Uh, on a serious note, we are here to talk fantasy baseball. Um, there is a lot to get into. I know the schedule for us hasn't been very consistent, but uh, I am getting married next weekend. So life is kind of crazy. We probably won't have a podcast again for another week or two. So bear with us check in we'll, we'll try and be on twitter and whatnot to let you know uh stuff you should be doing we'll pump, pump out some articles and then we'll get the podcast when we get the podcast out so uh appreciate everyone bearing with us but ben we have a lot to get into there's a bunch of stuff that i want to hit um including some studs who were working their way back and i want to kind of see you know we can rank these three guys where how comfortable you are uh, to own them the rest of the year in terms of, you know, are they going to get re-injured, you know, all that good stuff. So uh, Clayton Kershaw threw a bullpen on Sunday. Um, they're expected to be one more bullpen session sometime this week with the possibility of returning next week. So uh, he's been dealing with elbow tendonitis since the beginning of May, um, but it looks like he is scheduled to return. Uh, same for Madison Bumgarner, who, you know, obviously fractured his pinky, um, is is doing a bullpen on uh, he, or he faced some hitters already on Tuesday. He is actually pitching on Saturday uh, right down the road from me in Sacramento um, and then also is expected to be back in the rotation as early as uh, the you know next week, June 1st. Um, and then Robbie Ray's a little bit behind those two guys working on uh, he's throwing from 90 feet, um, doing a bullpen, working back from his oblique. It's probably going to be a couple more weeks for him. If you're looking at these three pitchers for the rest of the season, um, you know, I guess has has your rankings of the three kind of uh, adjusted a ton, or is it still Kershaw, Bumgarner, Robbie Ray? Um, Bumgarner's obviously closer to Kershaw now than he would have been, say, a month ago when Kershaw was pitching, just simply because I don't expect Bumgarner to be a significant amount worse than Kershaw. And if they're going to be back about the same time, I think Kershaw's elbow tendonitis has me more worried than yeah. Bumgarner's fractured pinky because like a fractured pinky is, is a fluke kind of injury. I also assume that if Madison Bumgarner is starting next Saturday at AAA, you are missing your wedding to go and watch Madison Bumgarner if well, he's I'm actually, just down the road. I'm actually getting married on Sunday, so if if I wanted to make it work, I probably could. Um, but, you know... Uh, it, just think of all that chaos that's going to happen the day before your wedding that you could miss by going and watching Madison Bumgarner. I think you should. On the morning of my wedding, I went and played nine holes of, holes of golf. So, uh, I, I mean, you, you can you can pull it off. So I, I think you should do it. And I think um, you owe it to us to do it. And if you don't do it, I think you have failed us more than you failed your wife. Yeah, but, well, um, I can I can say, I well, I have, I have this podcast that I record, so it's kind of important to go watch Bumgarner pitch. So uh, I think you're right, Ben. But uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of with you in terms of Bum, Bumgarner and Kershaw being pretty equal. And honestly, if we're talking about Kershaw with tendonitis, that could flare up really easily. And all of a sudden he's back on the DL where once Bumgarner's back, he should be back and he should be kind of his normal self. So if you're thinking rest of the season, is that Bumgarner actually above Kershaw for you? Yeah, probably just a fraction, but in terms of what I kind of expect, it, it's going to be, if Kershaw's in the rotation, he's going to be better, but mm. if I if I was offered a trade for one of them today, if, say, an owner was offering me both of them for certain players, so if I wanted Bumgarner or Kershaw, I would probably feel a little bit safer at this stage going for Bumgarner, and this is coming from an owner who had Kershaw last year and was constantly frustrated by 
what felt like just constant nagging injuries. I ended up trading him away to you because I just needed to get some innings under my belt. And, and between him and Rich Hill, they were sinking me. Um, I think both of them, though, are streets ahead of Robbie Ray. I just think Robbie Ray's been so bad this year. Um, I actually did a kind of sort of dive into what was what was wrong with Robbie Ray a, a few weeks ago for full press coverage. And um, it actually just seems that Robbie Ray might just be a slow starter. But what concerns me is that is he now going to have to start again? In which case, are we going to have to go through that first month of pain that we have mm-hmm. to go through every year with Robbie Ray? Or is he going to come back and be the guy that we've seen in the past where after, say, I think it was something like after his first five, six or seven starts, all of a sudden he turned it around. And like, I think last year his ERA was five in his first seven starts. And then it was like less than 2.5 the rest of the way. He's a guy who gets better as the season goes on. I think he's, he's probably a guy that needs to get a bit more warmed up. And maybe that's something the Diamondbacks have to look into is, is how they can get him ready for the start of the season. But He's such been always been seems to be such an injury prone kind of guy that I, I don't think they're going to stress him too much during spring training. I think they're just going to take the sucky Robbie Ray at the start of the year and see what happens. So for me, it's probably Bumgarner by a fraction from Kershaw, but then there's quite a wide gap back to Robbie Ray at this stage. Yeah, I think I'm with you, especially because we don't really know when Ray is going to be back. It could be mid June. It could be the All Star break. Um, you know, obviously, Robbie Ray owners are, are excited to have him back. I. I drafted him in, in my NFBC league to kind of be my my gap until because I also drafted Bumgarner, who was hurt at the time. And I was like, oh, OK, I got uh, Arietta, I got Robbie Ray, um, you know, I, f- I forget who else I had. Um, and, I, you know, I can make it work. And then when Bumgarner goes back, it makes my pitching even stronger. And, uh, well, that hasn't come to fruition yet. But uh, hopefully I'll get Bumgarner back this week. Hopefully I get Robbie Ray back soon and then uh, both these guys. But I'm with you. Uh Bumgarner, I don't know. Kershaw is just so tempting, especially because when he's at his best, there's no one that's as good. And as Scherzer is close and Sales close, but um, you know that the the tendonitis definitely is a little concerning. I'd probably still go Kershaw over Bumgarner, but um, if you're looking for stability and for consistency the rest of the way, Bumgarner is probably your better option. Speaking of consistency, Rich Hill. Uh, another week, another blister issue. He's back on the DL. He's probably going to go for about a month this time. Um, is Rich Hill even worth dealing with at this point? I'm starting to lean towards not. And I've always been, well, always been is not strictly true. But over the last year or so, I've been a big um, a Rich Hill believer in that I will take what he gives me when he pitches. Mm-hmm. But it's just getting so frustrating now and he's not been good even when he's been returning this year so i just wonder he he, he's getting on a bit now like i know he's not had a lot of innings on his arm but i just wonder whether or not it's all finally catching up to him and and whether what we saw was just a few good years yeah i mean he was incredible when he would make his outings but now he's like coming out like he he had an uh, outing against the nationals threw a couple pitches and was done he's had a couple out outings where he's three four five innings and then he's done um, so he, he's, his level isn't there when he's actually pitching. And, um, you know, I'm getting to the point where if I need pitching, I'm fine dropping him and picking up somebody else, uh, and, and streaming and kind of getting through it because I just, I, unless you have DL spots where he can set him, but even then when he comes back, you know, you, you could not pitch him and he could be awesome or you could pitch him and then he's out in the first or second inning and he's screwing up all your, uh, all your starts and all your, you know, your innings and all that stuff. So I, I just like, if there's somebody in your league that still believes in him, I think I'm selling him 30 cents on the dollar and uh, seeing what I can get. Um, you know, yeah. And- I think, I think that's not a bad shout. I think if you, if you stick on and hold on to him, what you've got to do is you, you've got to just go with it. I know that sounds really stupid, but you can't just, this, this seems so obvious, but you can't just like, you can't not start him. If if you own him and you're going to hold on to him, he has to be a guy you start every time he is pitching, come what may, because you're gonna you you're not gonna enjoy it if he does have a good outing. It's it's a really hard one. If you're holding on to him, he's a guy you've just got to take the plunge and start and trust the stuff, trust the trust the numbers and just go with it. And it's gonna be it's gonna be awful. It's not gonna be a lot of fun. If if you can find someone who does genuinely believe. I think I would sell now. Would you take uh, Mike Moustakas for him if you needed help at the corner? 
Yeah, I think so. Moustakas is, is, is hitting really well. And I actually think Moustakas could end up being traded somewhere that's probably a little bit more preferable for a hitting lineup because he's only on a one-year rental deal. And it, he could very easily end up like... which I, OK, I, New York's a bad example, which is where we all had him going at the start of the year. But let's say Andrew Hart does get injured. could You could see him ending up in New York this this year. So he, there's a lot of options with Mike Moustakas. I, th- I would do that deal. What about a little bit lower, Brandon Belt, CJ Crone? Like, would you take those two guys if you needed help at the corner? Um, that's where it gets tough. Um, mm. I might do it for Crone. I don't know if I'd do it for um for Belt. Uh, if you need middle infield help, Jed Lowry. He's 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 slowing down a little bit, but he's still hitting over three hundred. Three homers, 16 RBI in the past 30 days. Uh, would you take Lowry for uh, Rich Hill? No, I think I would stick at Lowry. I just, I just think what Lowry's done is 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 not repeatable long term. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you there. It's just, um, you know, it's there in terms of what you can get back for for an injured pitcher. Um, yeah, I think I think CJ Crone or a guy kind of around there um, is, is probably a realistic target. Uh, let's talk bullpens, and we'll go. Uh, we'll stay in Southern California, but we'll go across uh, down the freeway to Anaheim, where Kenya Middleton is getting Tommy John surgery, and Mike Sosha is in a quandary. He's got Blake Parker, he's got Jim Johnson, he's got Justin Anderson, Cam Bedrosian still there. Um, how do you feel, or how, I guess, how do you see this bullpen shaking out? Do you feel comfortable taking shots on any of these guys, um, in your, in your fantasy leagues? Not hugely. No. Um, at the moment, roster resource has all three of them pegged as closer, uh, Johnson, Parker and Anderson. I've seen some sites list Parker and Anderson as the co-closers. I've seen some sites say it's Jim Johnson's job. I've seen other sites say pick up Cam Pedrosian. He's the best pitcher there. I, I think I'm still in clear of any of them. I think if I've got a spot and I, it's just like a spot that I just keep rotating through, I'd probably gamble on... I do think Pedrosian's the best pitcher there. I really do. I think I would gamble on Pedrosian just because I think long-term, I actually think he can he can be the best best for you in terms of numbers he gives you so he and he hasn't been great this year but i think long term he can be um the, the second option would be blake parker if i want a guy who's definitely in that mix i think in the last 14 days he's been he's been quite good so it, it's a tough one but that's probably the direction i'd go in for now so i have a weird mike Sosha vibe that he's going to go with jim johnson and if you're looking for pure save potential i think jim johnson's the guy he could have a Fernando Rodney-esque type season where he gets 20 plus saves the rest of the way and Mm -hmm. probably hurts your ERA and whip. But if you need pure saves, um, I, I, that feels very much like what, what I would expect Uh, outside of him. Blake Parker is probably my favorite. If you want, if you could afford to be a little more patient in terms of the saves, um, get a good ERA and whip, get some strikeouts. I think Blake Parker is a great guy. And then if he ends up getting in that role because he's pitching the best um, and then maybe grabs, you know, a handful of saves over the next month. um, I I think that that's kind of a way I would lean. Um, So, but I think Parker's Mm -hmm. the better option, but I could see Jim Johnson getting an odd, oddly um, large number of saves and kind of being, being useful um, the rest of the way. Yeah, it's possible. I'll be honest, it could be any of them. You, you, I feel like whoever you pick up, you'll be wrong. And I feel like Sosha could do like, you know, kind of what Houston was doing. Um, and, and just, it could be really random. And one day it's one guy, one day it's another guy. You know, the, the, yeah. wind, the wind is blowing out a different direction. So he's completely changing his mind. Um, and, you know, that's, that's why I kind of like having Parker, just because at least you know he'll pitch and he'll get you strikeouts. Um, and then you hope he gets a few of those saves when when Sosha is kind of being a little uh, less crazy. Uh, let's have a prospect party, Ben. Let's talk some of these young guys. A uh, couple guys that got called up, and one that people are starting to to really cre- you know think is coming soon. Uh, so we'll start with Austin Meadows, who just got called up uh, to replace an injured Starling Marte. 
uh, was hitting 20, 294, 20 bombs, 8 steals, and 136 at bats this season in AAA. Uh, he, he just got called up. He's uh, played basically Friday, Saturday, Sunday, already has a steal. Um, I guess if he plays well, the, you know, the Pirates are going to have to find a way to keep him in the lineup. But with getting Josh Harrison back, assuming Marte comes back anytime soon, it might be a little bit of a challenge. Um, is Austin Meadows a guy that you're interested in kind of having uh, on your team and, and riding the wave? Can I just clarify? He has not hit 20 home runs this year. He's hit. He scored 20 runs. He's only hit uh, one home run in AAA. That I was would just make way at... more sense because I was looking at fan graphs earlier and I was – I was like, that they, doesn't they all make sense. Into one, yeah. yeah. It's very difficult. I get it wrong all the time on their numbers. Yeah, because I'm just looking and right above that. It said, he, it said if, if he were going by that, he would have hit 48 home runs in 312 plate appearances last year. I was like, what the hell? And then I realized I was looking in the wrong column too. So it's easily done. Um, uh, I just pulled it out of Azer. So that, that makes me feel good. Oh, that's all right. It, it happens to the best uh, and the worst and to our host, apparently. So, uh, but. There you go, guys. That's what I deal with on a daily basis. You should see the the faux pas in our chat. Yeah, it's like the, the power um, is it the power? He's more of a speed guy, right? Uh, yeah, but he's not really even a significant speed guy. I mean, like he had eleven steals in total last year. He had seventeen the year before, and he had twenty in twenty fifteen. So he's not a significant speed guy. I mean, he's just a kind of a kind of solid on base guy who who can provide a little bit of speed he's nothing to to kind of blow you away he's a guy i would add if the opportunity is there um but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rush he he's he'd be last out of the names on this list for me yeah i mean he has probably like if you because if you double the 300 at bats or 300 play appearances to close to 600 if he plays full time he's a guy that could approach 20 steals and that's useful um yes yeah. So, you know, and, and his, you know, if he's hitting 300 or close to it, um, you know, it's, it's a solid player. But, yeah, I'm with you. It's not it's not somebody that I'm, like, falling all over myself to get, especially with the potential of him back in AAA, um, you know, with, uh, with, with Marte back in the lineup, with Harrison back in the lineup. So he, he's a nice short-term replacement with potential long-term value, but um, not definitely not somebody who's going to, you know, win you a league for sure. Uh, now, somebody who could do that is Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's hitting 400 with seven homers, 41 RBI, uh, and 170 PAs. He's actually already owned in almost 40% of Yahoo leagues. Um, if you are in a standard 10, 12 team redraft, is he a guy you're you're adding and stashing and hopes that he gets the call and and becomes you know what we expect him to become at the major league level? Oh, for the life of me, I cannot, I cannot recall what I read the other day. But somebody was talking about Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and I apologise to whoever it was because I'm going to make a mess of this. But they basically said that Toronto have no reason to call him up yet because it will just start the service clock. And this is crazy. But the difference between calling him up now and calling him up after the the Super Two or whatever it is. Um, please bear in mind, I have absolutely no concept how real baseball works. It's a real, real flaw of my of my life is that I don't have a concept of how real baseball works. My only concept is how fantasy baseball works. Um, <laughs> that's like a 12 million difference between calling him up now and calling him up in a month's time. So uh, it just worries me that that they might get to a point where they just think, let's just stick with it. I mean, I think what we're going to have to see is Josh Donaldson shift first because. Um, Kendrick Morales is in the lineup semi-regularly, even though he's been pretty rubbish. Um, I've never even heard of Richard Urena. I thought that was the pitcher in um, Miami. That's a, yeah, that's uh, yeah um, it's, 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 it, it's a difficult one. I, I think I would rather have him than I would have Austin Meadows. I just think when he comes, he's going to be better than Meadows is. I guess the, the thing is we'll have to see um, if – if uh, if he starts playing outfield, because if he starts playing the outfield, then we know there's a good chance that he's on his way. If if he's still at third base, unless they're trading Josh Donaldson anytime soon, which I I, I mean I, I guess it's, anything is possible, but um, 
I don't. How know. long is Kendris Morales contract? Could they just give up on Morales? Yeah. I mean, I mean, would you you're... would you really be shocked? I mean, if if they just gave up on Morales and moved Do- uh, Donaldson to third base to just DH to secure his health, I mean, I'm just looking. Morales is contract into in another year. I mean, no one's going to trade for that, so they have to probably carry him or release him. Yeah. But. Uh, it just wouldn't shock me if they just said, right, what we want to do, Tiosca Hernandez is hitting great. Um, we've got um, Salate. We've got, who's the younger lad, the young lad in middle infield that they have oh, playing uh, uh, that's gone back down? Um, oh. blah, 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 I'm blanking. Hold on. Lourdes uh, Guriel. Uh, oh, I thought you were talking about uh, uh, Dalton Pompey. Lourdes Gurriel came up for a brief period, didn't he? So um, I think there's a chance that he um, that that they just that they go young and that they say right, if we're going to challenge next year with the Red Sox and the um, and and the Yankees, we've got to we've got to get these guys in now and get them blooded. I just I just think it is. So I think what you might see is maybe. All star break kind of call up, so it's yeah. worth a stash if you've got the bench space, but you've got to have a fairly deep bench, and it, it's going to be it's going to be fairly tough. It, but you're right, if you leave it and he keeps hitting the way he does, rumors are going to keep circulating that he's going to come, and his ownership's just going to keep spiraling, and this may be your last chance to grab him. I mean, he's definitely like I wouldn't be worried that oh he's only in double A, he's not going to get called up because the next guy we're going to talk about just did that, so it's it's definitely under the cards. Um, I think outfield would make the most sense just because you'll have Pilar in one corner or in the middle, um, and then either uh, you'll have some platoon of, uh, of, of, of of Curtis Granderson and uh, and Teoscar Hernandez. Yeah, Teoscar Hernandez. So you know you put you put uh, you put Guerrero in one corner, you put Oscar Teoscar Hernandez and Curtis Granderson in some sort of platoon. Maybe you give Guerrero a day off every once in a while and play both guys. Um, it really depends on kind of what they think of Gritchuk, what they think of Steve Pierce. Obviously, these guys, um, are, they're not super worried about long term, but um, they are on the DL right now. And if they you know, come back anytime soon, maybe they consider using them, um, you know, and then that kind of mitigates the, uh, the need for extra help in the outfield. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Um, I don't know that I'm rushing out to get him. I feel like Guerrero will come up. And he'll be fine, but I don't think he'll be a dominant force right away. And I feel like, you know, next year he'll be a guy that everyone's really excited about and will get drafted really highly. Um, but, I, you know, I could see somebody, him coming up, kind of struggling a little bit, uh, making that big jump, and then, you know, next year being the guy that kind of, when he kind of breaks out and becomes a star. Uh, the third guy on our list, and the guy I kind of just referenced, is Juan Soto. Uh, he's 19. He just got called up from Double A. Um, you know, it's it's a very kind of interesting move. He he doesn't have a lot of experience kind of across the board, but uh, he, the Nationals apparently believe in him and want to use him. And um, you know, they they jumped him all the way up from Double A. Uh, is he a guy that uh, you're looking to add um, in, in you know most redraft or like um, shallow keeper leagues? Yeah, it. He is a guy that I, I'm looking to add in most places. Definitely, I think there's a fair chance he's going to be around for a while. They the injury bug is is biting hard mm-hmm. in Washington this year. And I mean, we've talked about Daniel Murphy. We just don't know Adam Eaton. This seems to be dragging. Brian Goodwin. I can't see why if Soto is good, they're gonna they're gonna bring Goodwin back in. Um, and Ryan Zimmer might just be on the scrap heap sooner rather than later um interestingly they called him up and then today he's out of the lineup and mark reynolds is in the lineup so that's certainly interesting i i believe alex wood is a is a lefty yeah that's, um, that's why he's not playing today however it's interesting that they chose to keep matt adams in the lineup and shift matt adams to the outfield rather than playing soto but maybe they just wanted to um ease him in so to speak and see how things go if that if that all kind of makes if that kind of makes sense and maybe sticking him out there um sticking him out there at this point against the lefty is not what they want to do he it's going to be frustrating for a little while because he is going to be the guy that sits when when there's not a space like he's going to be the first guy out but 
I haven't looked what Michael Taylor's been doing recently, but I can't for a second imagine Michael Taylor's all of a sudden started um, hitting with competency on a regular basis because he's Michael Taylor and he never hits with competency on a regular basis. Yeah, so I mean, he's, he's hitting below 200, which is what we expect from Michael Taylor. And he I mean, obviously has the speed, but uh, you know, the consistency isn't his thing. And um, you know, like went one for six in the doubleheader yesterday. So that, I mean, that's kind of who he is. So I, I think we're ready to move on from Michael Taylor. I think uh, Brian Goodwin is fine. Fourth, fifth outfielder. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman is done. Um, I'm hoping that Matt Adams can stick at first base, but you know the Mark Reynolds thing kind of makes things interesting. And um, you know there there's a lot of a lot of real estate. Adam Eaton's probably out at least another six weeks, probably closer to two months at this point. So you know there's obviously opportunity. And, and you know Guerrero and Soto are both 39% uh, owned on Yahoo. And if you're taught if you're going to tell me one of these guys is going to make an impact down. Uh, the rest of the way, I think Soto's the answer. Yeah, I, 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 you could talk me into either one. To be quite honest, I just think Soto's got the advantage that he's up now, and he's probably. I mean, at the start of the year, his estimated time in arrival was twenty twenty. That tells you what he's done mm -hmm. um, this year to jump himself up. I mean, I think he's gone four levels this year from single A up to. Um, the full major leagues and that's pretty incredible so i'm gonna I, i'm gonna i would I, he would be top of my list it would be um ugh, thingy second um the toronto guy guerrero second and austin meadows third for me i mean if i need impact now i think i'd go to austin meadows just because i need impact no sorry i'd get to one soto then austin meadows if i can wait a little bit it's juan soto vladimir guerrero yep i am with you uh let's talk about matt adams for a second because he's definitely a guy that People went ham on, and when he was, when he was obviously crushing and um, spent a lot of fab, spent a lot of, you know, we use his waiver wire priorities, all that good stuff, made sure they got him on their team. Uh, now people are kind of bailing a week later after he faced some lefties and uh, some rainouts and whatnot. Um, you know, we've seen Matt Adams get hot at times. We've seen Matt Adams struggle against lefties and not be used by MLB teams. Are, are you, if you own Matt Adams, is he a guy you're – holding on to a guy you're keeping on your bench, a guy you're comfortable cutting. What are you doing with him? Um, it, it's just, it, that's just Matt Adams, isn't it? He's just, he's just a guy that, that goes up and down for now. I would hold on and just see how this all shakes out because he's going to be in the lineup. I mean, we know he sucks to lefties. Um, well, they've not had terrible matchups this week. Like, it's been fairly decent pitchers coming in. So I would be interested just to see what happens now when we turn the corner into into the next couple of weeks. I'd be holding on just to see because, I mean, this is a guy that, that, could, that can go crazy and hit you 10 home runs in, like, two or three week span. So we've already seen him do it. So yeah. don't, don't cut bait yet because you could still get reward. I mean, if they stick with him all year and he plays – a hundred games, there's real possibility he hits somewhere in the region of 30 home runs. I mean, 25 is probably a more realistic number, but 30 home runs is nothing to be sniffed at. Yeah, I think in Roto, I'm definitely holding on to him and, and just leaving him out there because I think like I think there will be ups, I think there will be downs, but I think come yeah. season's end, you'll be much happier that you held on to him and, and rode the wave and, and got solid production out of him. Uh, yeah, and I mean in points leagues, it all just depends on your scoring. If you're if your scoring is heavy on strikeouts, you probably don't don't want to hold on to him. But if your scoring is heavy on home runs, then he's a guy you want to hold on because when he does have a good week, he'll win you weeks on your on your own. And I mean in head to head matchups, you you need to have him in there every week because if 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 you've got a power heavy league, he'd be that roto or be that points. If he has a good week, he will win you a week pretty much single-handedly because the points he puts up will be so astronomical compared to other guys in that single week. But what he will also do is he will have weeks where he doesn't sink you, but he doesn't he doesn't add anything to your team. And you look around and say, well, I could have had X replacement level first baseman off the bench who would have had a better impact for me. And that's the frustration of Matt Adams. Yep. Yep. I'm 100% with you. Uh, just a quick note, Chris Davis left today's game, the KH Chris Davis of the A's uh, with a groin strain. So keep an eye on that. Um, hopefully it's minor and he's back really soon. But 
um, you know, definitely, definitely monitor that if you're a, if you're a Davis owner. Uh, let, let's hit the waiver wire, Ben. I want to throw out a few names that I've been kind of excited about um, and see what you think, and and if you have any other names you wanna you wanna include. Uh, so let's talk about Daniel Scalso. Uh, never sexy, um, but you know has multiple eligibility, hitting 342 with two homers, seven RBIs, and six runs over the last two weeks. Uh, available in over 80% of Yahoo leagues. Uh, I mean, if you need help in your middle infield and you want to just, you know, play him while he's going, um, I, I think Descalso is a great name to add. Yeah, I mean, anytime that someone's hot of middle infield, you're always going to be considering him. Mm-hmm. Personally, he's not, not my first choice, but if, if you need a guy, I have no issue going out and getting him and riding him while he's hot and drop him as soon as he's not. Yeah, uh, Brandon Crawford of the Giants is also playing really well. Would you rather have Crawford or Descalso? I feel like with Crawford, we've I've, I feel like I've seen it before, and I trust it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I think I'd probably go Crawford. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm probably with you. But like you said, it, it's just, you know, when these guys are going, you, you want to jump on, and, um, you know, when they're not performing, you just kind of move along to – to the next I guy. Mean, yeah, I mean, you could add Descalso today. And if you're in a daily transaction league, you could add Crawford on Wednesday if mm-hmm. Descalso has three bad games and you're not going to lose out. So perhaps that's the move is to add Descalso, gamble on the potential that this hot streak carries on for another week and he gives you another couple of home runs. And then if it falls off, go and get Crawford and, and see. I mean, Crawford's not giving you anything special, but Descalso's not over the course of a season either. So, sure. I mean, it's quite nice that Crawford's hitting 300, but... And he's on pace for what, 12, 15, yeah, 12 to 15 home runs. I mean, it, 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 that's actually a really good return for Brandon Crawford. So, but I feel like the move is to go get Descalso and then go and get Crawford. Yep. And uh, if you, if Scooter Gannett is available in your league, I would add him over both these guys. Um, yes. But his ownership is, is close to 80% on ESPN. Um, and I get, my, would it be about the same on Yahoo? So, um, you know, if he's out there, definitely grab him. Uh, Crawford, yeah, I'm pro- man. Uh, they're they're both they're both very interesting. Um, obviously Crawford hitting 446 with a homer and a steal and 11 RBI over the past uh, 15 days is pretty dang good. Um, what are we doing with Travis Jankowski? This is a guy that we we I feel like you know we were talking about Matt Adams kind of getting hot for a minute and then kind of going away. Uh, I feel like we've done this before with Jankowski. He's obviously on the good side of the platoon with Manny Margot. Um, there's a ton of really interesting outfield names in San Diego, but it looks like Jankowski is going to be playing, and uh, if he keeps playing the way he's going, 426 with a homer, two RBI, and more importantly, six steals over the past uh, 15 days. Um, you know, he's been crushing. I've been adding him in a lot of places just to get that speed bump. Um, but do you expect do you expect Jankowski to kind of fizzle out like? Uh, and kind of go away after, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, or do you think maybe he's, um, you know, kind of stuck for a little while anyways? I think it, it, it's obviously will fizzle out. Like that's just the way it kind of, kind of works. It, it, yeah. it, 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 it will burn out. He's on the strong side of a platoon, as you say, but also if I just read you his last five lineup spots, center field, right field, center field, center field, left field, he's covering ground everywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. Franchi Cordero is generally the everyday left fielder. That's fine. And Jose, per- oh, Jose Perella shifted into second base, which I believe he'd been playing outfield early on in the year. Um, Manuel Margot did have a bit of an injury the last couple of days, so it, it would be interesting to see whether that's a true platoon or whether we're looking at Fran Mil Reyes, the, the prospect who's now played right field three days in a row. It, it's going to be interesting. At the moment, Jan Kelsey's the hot hand. They're going to stick with him. I, I can't say anything for like what's going to happen in two or three weeks' time, but... I mean, we've seen Jankowski steal 30 bases in the major leagues before, and that's extremely valuable. And that was in half a season's work. I mean, I believe at least that's possibly, possibly Damien was raving about him last year and his potential to steal 40, 50 bases. And he, he just flamed out completely. But I mean, I, I, I'm buying in. He's, this is just, this is a bloke that stole 71 bases in 2013. In, I know that was at single A, and that was in 556 play appearances, but 71 bases. Yeah, I, I mean, 50-something like, steals is definitely possible with him. 
Mm-hmm. But it's just, you know, with the Padres, you, you don't know if they're going to play him enough to do that. But can I also say that in his previous trips to the Padres, yes, he hit 211 in a, in a small sample size in 2015. He hit 245 in half a season's work in 2016. That's not actually that bad these days. It's not great by any means, but it's not disastrous. It's not, I mean, what does, what does Billy Hamilton hit? Yeah, he can't I mean, hit he, much. 50 points higher he, than Billy Hamilton, and he could steal just as many bases. Yeah, I mean, Billy Hamilton has hit a little bit better. It's hit around that 250 mark in his, in his career, though. So, I mean, but he, he could be Billy Hamilton. I mean, let's just look at Billy Hamilton's last few seasons. 226, 57 bases. 260, 58 bases. 247, 59 bases. Why can Jankowski not do that in three quarters of a season's worth of work? He He's quite capable of doing it. He was hitting 363 this year in... Triple A, I'd have to look in and, and read whether anyone's wrote about his mechanics, but there's something definitely that's changed here. I just I don't know what it is at the moment, but there's something that that is definitely different in the way he's hitting because he's having success that, like what he hasn't had at any of these levels going back for now three years. I mean, he hit 392 in 2015, and yeah, he struggled with the Padres, but that was very small sample size. Like this is this is something different and I mean even if he only hits two fifty or two sixty and he falls off the map a little bit, but if he steals you thirty, forty, fifty bases, you you are quids in. You've got to add him because bases stolen bases are so desperate. And everywhere that I'm not already competing in that category, I've added him this week. Yep. And he's a great short term ad, helps your helps your average a lot, gets you those steals and then if he starts, you know, hitting two hundred again or out of the out of lineups, uh, not playing very much. Um, you just cut him and you move on to the next guy. But I think he's definitely worth um, taking a look at. You mentioned Fran Mel Reyes. Um, in terms of power potential, this guy has it, but he's really really struggled since coming up. Um, hitting two, you know, he's hitting 143 over the past 15 days. Um, I, I I don't know. Is 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 his potential worth? holding on to and, and kind of seeing if something comes of it um, or is it with the power kind of surge across the board, you know, sc- Scooter Gannett hitting, you know, same amount as Fran Mil Reyes probably the rest of the way. Is it worth, you know, taking a shot on? I'd rather take the shot on Jankowski because I think the steals are more, are more rare. Mm-hmm. Um, although the fact that Reyes hit 14 home runs in 134 plate appearances at AAA is extremely impressive. I know, I know he must play in the PCL, so you get a boost there. But um, he's definitely a guy I would be considering in in deeper leagues where I need power. But you you're right, power is is fairly fairly common now. Like, I mean, you can get similar power from Fran Mil Reyes by just streaming guys like Matt Adams and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't I wouldn't lock myself in to Fran Mil Reyes, but Definitely, if he's out on your wave wire, what what will happen? A lot of people will have picked him up when he got picked up. Now people will be starting to to worry, and if he has another couple of slow weeks, you'll start to see him drop back onto wave wires. The first sort of day you see him, you read something about him flashing some power. Maybe he hits his first home run. Then you go and get him, and you hope that that's the start of a hot streak. But I don't think you're the guy now that goes and, and trades for him or goes and holds him particularly because I just I, I I think you're right. I don't think power is the desperate upside that we need right now i think it's steals yeah speaking of steals malik smith is running again and playing um are you come if you you know are you are if maybe someone else in your league got on the jankowski bandwagon if you're looking for a little speed bump are you uh taking malik smith and, and riding him until he starts hitting 200 again yeah, I think I am. Um, I mean, again, this is something new from Malik Smith. But last year, in half a season's worth of work, he hit he hit 270 and stole 16 bases. So, I mean, across across two levels last year, he hit in the 260 region, 265 region, and he stole 37 bases. He he's more than capable of doing it. I'm absolutely adding Malik Smith. Yep. Um, what about Greg Bird? It looks like he might actually be back with the Yankees in the lineup. Um, he's 50% owned on Yahoo. You know, he, he has been struggling in his kind of rehab outings, hitting below 200. You know, Bird was somebody we were both excited about coming into the season. Um, are, are you, are you you know, if he's available, are you adding him and seeing if anything comes of it? Or uh, with the guys like Brandon Bell, C.J. Crone, Matt Adams, there's just so much potential in, at the corner that we don't really need someone like Greg Bird. Is he worth adding? 
for now, I'm not rushing to go and add Greg Bird. I, I just I struggle to see where he's gonna gonna go. Are the Yankees just gonna slot him straight into the middle of of their lineup? I, I I'd be shocked. I I'm just just sort of trying to pull up their lineup now just to see what they've been doing. But um, so they've been hitting. Okay, Gleyber Torres nine. Miguel Andujar has been hitting six the last two days with um, Gary Sanchez and Didi Gregoris having a couple of a couple of days on the on the bench. So I wonder whether or not what we might see is is him slotting in that sixth position. But with the way Didi's been hitting, his slot was going to be kind of three four somewhere in there was going to be where we thought he was going to go. At best, he's going to he's going to replace Tyler Austin, who's hit as high as fifth at times this week, but it's generally been hitting six or even seventh. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the problem. I feel like there's a serious flaw to what he can give you. And for that reason, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stay clear for now. In fact, I think probably he's about as interesting to me as Clint Fraser is in New York at the moment in terms of, I, I suppose at least Bird's going to play, but I just have my concerns that he's not going to get it worked out. He, he struggled when he came back from injury last year. I'd love to see Greg Bird play a season where he doesn't have an injury to start it off and he can just settle in. But is it is it is it time to bring up the body type conversation with Greg Bird? Yeah, I mean it. His body is just not his friend, and it keeps breaking down every single year. And uh, you know, I'm kind of with you in terms of he could come back, and then he gets injured again, and then he's gone for another while. So um, yeah, I mean it, it's interesting because Didi Gregorius is struggling a lot. So they're talking about moving him. So maybe Bird comes back, jumps right in that three hole, and if he's if he's you know hitting really well, maybe he plays. But uh, you know, with some of the with Gleyber Torres, with some of the guys, Miguel Andohar, like it, it's it they maybe they put one of those guys in. I think Greg Bird's probably a six or seven hole hitter at best, at least initially. If he starts raking, maybe they move him up. But yeah, I just I don't know. I don't see the upside. Um, at least, at least initially, I, I think he's yeah. a guy that you have to, you know, let it see, and then maybe you miss out on adding him. And you're, but I, I don't know that the p- difference between him and CJ Crone or him and Brandon Belt or any of those kind of guys um, it is massive and, and worth you know kind of risking holding him in your in your lineup or on your bench. No, and I mean the good news is that Tyler Austin's done nothing to make it worth keeping him in the lineup, and neither has Neil Walker. They've been two of the most disappointing. Guys who I, I mean, Neil Walker was another guy I thought could we could see a lot from in that Yankees line, and he's all but flamed out of it now. So it, he is going to play. That's what I was saying. I was just having a look at the DH, and uh, obviously that's Stanton sort of every other day with then who goes on the DH when Stanton isn't there? Oh, anyway, <laughs> it's a complicated matter. There's Probably lots of players and all over the place. Or, yeah, they, yeah they Sanchez work. has days there. Although Sanchez has caught five of the last six days, which I find quite interesting. Um, but anyway, also, how bad must Clint Frazier be in, out, out in the outfield to have played DH while uh, Giancarlo Stanton played the outfield? I mean, that's not a ringing endorsement, let's say. Um, I, I just think with Greg Bird, it, it's one of those situations where unless your first base situation absolutely sucks, I don't know what you gain by going out and getting him. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Uh, let's talk about Joe Musgrove as we kind of talk about uh, head into pitching. Um, he's going to make his, his start, his first start of the season on Friday against, uh, St. Louis. He's widely available, a uh, guy that gets, you know, eight, about, you know, probably a little less than a strikeout per inning. Um, is he somebody that's interesting to you or is he kind of just, uh, you know, barely a streamer that, you know, we'll kind of see if he actually looks decent when he comes back. So it looks like they kind of worked him up sort of three, four, and then five five innings outings recently. And he's he's been doing okay. Um, ERA has always been a problem. It will, I think initially he's going to be a streamer. Mm-hmm. I think he, he's not a guy you're going to go out and add because look at his ERA from his last two seasons with the Astros. 4.06 and 4.77. Yes, the strikeouts have been there around eight strikeouts per nine, um, per nine innings. So... I think he's going to be a streamer. I think in your 15, 20 team, AL only, NL only type, sorry, no, obviously not AL only, but NL only <laughs> league, you, you go and, because I'm looking at the name Astros and it's really just throwing me there. Um, you go out and add him because the, uh, there, there's the potential, but 
in your 12s, your 14s, your 10s. Initially, he'll be a streamer, but he might be a guy you add one week as a streamer with upside. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't worry too much this week, but next week I'd look at the matchups and say, right, I'll add him. But what I'll do is I'll add him and I won't maybe immediately drop him. I will um, add him, see how he does, and think about whether or not I can open up a roster spot to keep him. If you're in like NFBC or deeper leagues and you have an Ian Kennedy, a Chad Cool, uh, Jose Urania, um, do you consider dropping any of those kind of guys for uh, for, the, for for Musgrove? Um, oh, see, Chad Cool and Urania, I just I think they're basically interchangeable in terms of team leagues. I definitely would go and add Musgrave, and I think Musgrove, and I think I'd get rid of, yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'd get rid of Urania and Cool. I think you need to back off Ian Kennedy. I think you need to leave Ian God like Kennedy alone. He yeah. he's not as bad as you pass him out. To, okay, he did have two bad outings in a row. One of them was against the Rays. I'm going to stop talking now. Yeah. yeah um. You're, anyway, you're, no, you're, I think I think Ian Kennedy, Ian Kennedy love is is approaching Matt Latos levels, and uh, that's not good for anybody. I think Ian Kennedy I would keep hold of for now. The other two I would drop. I think Ian Kennedy's got more upside than the other two just off the top of my head without going into caper nines for the other two. I feel like Kennedy's got more upside in that he he will strike out close to a batter, a, a batter per innings, whereas I don't see that so much from the other two. Like they, they might be doing it, but they don't. in my head they don't ring out as guys that do it. I immediately think of Kennedy as a guy that can strike out people. Um, um, so that's kind of the way I'm looking at this is that I want the guys with upside and in making them it's, it's, it's Kennedy Musgrove cool Urena. Uh Ben you won't believe this but we have another injured Dodger starter Alex Wood uh, left his outing today against the Nationals um, oh. yeah so let's see he was warming up prior to the bottom of the 7th called the trainer out Walked off the field after a brief conversation. Um, they're saying it was it, he's been dealing with cramping and uh, it was really hot in D.C. So hopefully that's all it is. Um, but yeah, the Dodgers just they can't keep starters healthy. It's Walker. Bueller is it not just di- is it not just dizziness um, from him having got to the ninth inning or the seventh <laughs> inning for like the first time in his life? Is yeah, that... he's, he he didn't know what to do. He's like, wait, I can't pitch this. I can't pitch this deep into games. I need. I need to come out and, and think about it. I'm just trying to have a look who might be the next guy up. I mean, there's no one jumps off the plate as being extremely amazing. Um, they look like they're guys like Yadier Alvarez, Mitchell White, and Dennis Santana, who are the prospect kind of guys down in double A are a little bit too far away. Uh, in, yeah, in double A, um, could be Brock Stewart, Manny Banyolos, Guermo, Mosca. No, you you get my point. Yeah. I'm talking names that no one's heard of here. So I wonder. I, I wonder if the Dodgers are going to get to a point where they're like, you know, I know it's early. I know it's the middle of May, and there's a lot that can happen. And you know, they have a lot of prospects where if they want to go make some some noise and get some pieces in in trade, yeah. they could do it. But at the same time, with Rich Hill do it dealing with his stuff, Justin Turner, uh, you know, Clayton Kershaw. And now, now Alex Wood. Like, there's so many guys that they're just constantly dealing with injuries. You know, uh, what's his name? Puig's been mi- missing some time. Like, do they just kind of go, okay, it's obviously not our year, and um, just kind of ride out the rest of the year? I don't know. They're already a pitcher short, aren't they, for Wednesday? They need to name a pitcher for Wednesday. So if Wood is injured, they're going to have to name two pitchers and bring them up. The The, the offense isn't firing. I think they're going to have to have a serious look and decide whether or not they actually think that this is worth now um, fighting to keep this this season alive. They are what six? Yeah, they're uh, nineteen and twenty six right now. So they're six games behind Arizona, five and a half behind Colorado, and three behind San Francisco, and only one ahead of San Diego. I mean, they're going to have to have a serious think about where Clayton Kershaw is. Mm-hmm. Where Rich Hill is, where Hyunjin Ryu is, where, whether these guys are, are worth rushing back to get into this rotation, because 
if you think if Kershaw, you can, I don't know how his contract situation works, and it might be that he won't be happy about this, but if you can just let him take his time right now and, and have these guys fit to go into next season, oh, it's sad that we're talking about that already, but this is a this is a bad situation right now. And like I say, unless they're gonna they're gonna rush a starter up, I just I just don't know where they're gonna go. I I, I wonder whether or not they've got a big bullpen with a lot of names in there like Tony Singrani. Not that long ago was he a starter. I know he's only just come back from the DL, but will they look to stretch him out? Could they look to use Pat Vendite, guys like that in these situations? Daniel Hudson, all of these guys could be guys that can go out there and um and, and do what the Tampa Bay Rays are doing, which is where they, they chuck out a guy like Eric Goodell to start a game, and then they just go Venditti, Hudson, Alexander, and just make up the numbers to try and get it to Fields, Chagois, Chag- 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 and Chagua. Jansen. It- Chagua. It's a, it's a good name. I like it. I, was, I wanted to pronounce it that way, but I didn't want to sound weird. So I'm glad <laughs> you did it first. Um, but, I mean, if they, maybe that would be the way they go. Maybe they have to look at stretching Tony Singrani out and – just using him as a as a reliever to start a game and just doing it that way to begin with, but it's it's a bad situation. It's it's not a fantasy situation really at the moment. Like you, at the moment, the only three guys in that rotation are Wood, Bueller, and Maeda from a fantasy point of view. Because yeah. Ross Strip, Stripling, you're only starting when he faces uh, San Diego. So, it, which actually, ironically, Ross Stripling is facing San Diego next week. He is a streamer. Um, just just so, uh... just on. A... I want to put a bow on this whole conversation, this whole podcast, and bring it back to where we started because we talked about Kershaw and Bumgarner and you know Robbie Ray to a lesser extent um, with concerns about this lineup or w- with this team kind of in general. Do we have? Do we worry that um, you know maybe they skip a Kershaw start, they let him stay on the DL a little extra, a little bit? Um, and then all of a sudden we're, you know, he, he's not really somebody that, oh, when he, when he pitches, he's great, but he's more of a James Paxton, Rich Hill kind of pitcher. Possibly. But at the moment, if he's going to be in the rotation, he's going to have to pitch every fifth day because, um, they don't have that luxury. It's crazy, isn't it? It was only this time last year we were stressing about, was he going to lose innings because Los Angeles had so many pitchers, they were going to go to a six man rotation and all of that kind of stuff. And, Oh, it, it's just, yeah, it's a bad situation. But it does bump Kershaw down a fraction because if this season keeps barreling away from them, there's a chance that if Kershaw's elbow tet flares up again, they might say to him, look, you're the best pitcher in baseball. And there's no debate about it. You don't need to do this. Just take the time, sit for the year, for the rest of the year and see what happens. But again, it's all contract situation. I'm sure if there's a situation, I've got a feeling there's an opt-out in his contract sometime in the near future which could could change that yeah uh it will be definitely interesting to uh to keep an eye on see if they bring up some young guys just to eat innings it's still very early so you know this whole conversation could seem really dumb uh as the all-star break approaches and the dodgers have gotten hot and all of a sudden they've ra- you know railed off 17 of 22 games or something crazy but um it's not a pretty sight right now in la and with all these injuries it, it's definitely um a situation to monitor and keep an eye on because if you're a Kershaw owner, um, you know, they could find ways, especially if they, once they get Alex Wood back and, um, you know, a few of their other guys, they could, they could find a way to kind of skip some starts and stuff if they're concerned about their, about their long-term potential. So some other sort of potential streamers just to sort of bring this all round and, and, and end it all off is I would look at Jeremy Hellickson as a two star streamer. He's mm-hmm. pitching home, uh, San Diego on the road in Miami. They are two absolutely wonderful um, matchups. I would look at uh, Jack Flaherty pitching at Pittsburgh on right. Saturday. I think Jack Flaherty should be added in most leagues anyway. Um, beyond that, it's beyond that. It's it's not a great week for streaming. It feels like every time there's a good pitcher, he has a tough matchup. Every time there's a um, a, a bad matchup, there's a terror. There's a worse pitcher pitching uh trevor cahill may be a two-star option he's got seattle at home and arizona at home it, that's more of a long sort of shot one but that, that's a possibility yeah i like the flaherty call i definitely i it's it, i know there's some kind of question marks about how how often he'll be up and with that rotation kind of being you know moved around but like i feel like he should be a guy that 
you're you're comfortable kind of s- keeping on your bench even when he's quote unquote in the minors because uh, he'll get called right back up pretty quickly and um, make a make a start and when he pitches he's so, he's really good. Yeah, I think I think uh, he uh, spoiler he's going to be number one on my. Um, uh, waiver wire ad list this week. I mean, yep. he's going to be above guys like Pavetta, Gohara, people like that. He, he is the, he's the biggest talent there. Absolutely. Uh, so make sure you go to fakepigskin.com and check out Ben's article um, and, and all of our fantasy baseball content. And we'll try and keep that as Phil uh, over the next few weeks while I'm here and there and everywhere. Uh, but Ben, this is good to get back. Good to, good to chat. We got a lot of good stuff on here. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube feed or our iTunes feed, wherever you happen to get the podcast. Make sure you rate, review, all that good stuff. Um, and as always, send us questions. We're always willing to help if, you know, you have, oh, should I make this ad drop? Should I pick up this guy for a spot start? You know, send them our way. We are all we can always be around. We can always respond to your, to your DMs or to your questions uh, via Twitter. It's the best way to get a hold of us. But for Ben Rolf, I'm Kyle Robert, and uh, we'll talk to you guys next time.